Please join me in welcoming our guest from AEA, uh, Tom Pyle. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Well, it's great to be here in Reno and, uh, and with my friends at AFP, and most importantly, it's, if I'm here, I'm not in D.C., which is a total mess right now. So when you talk about energy and energy policy, uh, you really have to, to talk about a contrast of visions. Okay, so if you look back over the past eight years, there are two visions that are being played out simultaneously in this country. The first is a vision of human ingenuity, of technology, of free markets. And that is what's happening in the energy space right now. We are looking at the biggest, the greatest economic energy boom in this country in our lifetimes. And it is not a result of dictates from Washington. It's not a result of mandates or set-asides or all these other crony handouts that are, that are being uh, dished out right now as we speak in DC. It is a result of great minds getting together and coming up with a new technology to unleash our vast energy resources in this country. What have the results been? Eight or nine years ago, we had get, uh, oil prices over $150 a barrel. Today, they're consistently under 40. We had $4 gasoline. Today here in Reno, I didn't see a price higher than 250, okay? We were paying enormous amounts for natural gas in this country. Today, gas prices are at rock bottom, and we're the largest producer of natural gas in the world today. We have become, in a few short years, an energy superpower, which has the ability to change the entire geopolitical perspective when it comes to energy. Just look at what happened in OPEC this past week. The OPEC cartel decided to dispel with quotas they're, no lo they're, they're trying to grapple with this energy revolution, and they're no longer in control of the price of energy. Our imports in this country are at an all-time low. Now let's compare it to what we're, we're dealing with in Washington, D.C. When President Obama got elected, he made two campaign promises with respect to energy. The first, he said, he will, his policies will make energy prices skyrocket. The second thing he said is, we're going to bankrupt coal. Okay, so with the help of AFP, joined together with AA and other allies, we thwarted his first attempt to do that. Back in 2009, 2010, he tried to ram a cap and trade bill, which we all know was a national energy tax, through a Democratic controlled Congress led by Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi. And he wasn't able to be successful because we said no. Well, the president said, I have a pen and a phone. And he, like he did with the internet regulation, and like he did with immigration, he unleashed his bureaucrats. He unleashed his regulators. And the result is, is an outright assault on our, energy, on our affordable and ener uh, reliable energy sources in this country. Just, just as an example, one rule alone that has passed and has been implemented took out the equivalent of 40 million homes that were once powered by coal-fired electricity. The, the other rule that he's moving through, the EPA calls the Clean Power Plan, which is really nothing more than a federal takeover of our energy system, will, will result in no matter how you slice it, no matter what energy source you replace coal with, you replace our existing sources with, it will take at least three to four times more of, out of our pocketbooks to pay for that electricity. So what you have really is a contrast of visions and with respect to energy, there couldn't be a more stark contrast. Look what's happening in Washington this week. We have a one, a, a, an over trillion dollar budget deal in the works, business as usual in Washington, right? But within that bill, there's, a, there's energy infighting taking place. On the one hand, the Republicans have been pushing and, and may be successful in repealing uh, the oil export ban. <laughs> We, we've had a, a ban on exporting our own oil resources in this country since the 70s, okay? That's a good policy. That's removing barriers and releasing barriers to our energy. It gives us more control of our energy choices. It, it, it makes energy more affordable for us. And again, it makes us an energy superpower. What did they trade for that? Tens of billions of dollars in subsidies and handouts to companies, many of which are foreign-owned, 
to, to basically pick winners and losers in the energy marketplace. They are subsidizing expensive, unreliable forms of energy to make their energy the, the, the quote, profitable kinds of energy. And these are the trade-offs. That's just one example. Another example, they put hundreds of millions of dollars worth of, of money into the budget so that President Obama could implement his global climate agenda. You all saw that he was in Paris recently uh, claiming that climate change is the single greatest threat to our national security. This is handout money this is to, to develop nations. And what he committed in Paris was draconian cuts in our carbon emission, carbon dioxide emission, while at the same time, countries like India and China are free to emit until uh, as far as the eye can see. I don't see how that puts America first by any means. So what, when we talk about these issues, I, I like to, to, to put that context together just to show you what the struggle uh, that's taking place. And the person we'll be hearing from, I'm looking forward to hearing from Carla Fiorina, she understands that probably as much as anybody. She worked in a, uh, she was a, 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 in the private sector in, in the state of California. She understands the fulfillment of the, the government top-down vision for energy. Just look at California. They pay the highest electricity prices in the country. They have the highest gas prices in the country. Manufacturing is leaving the state of California in droves. People are leaving the state of California in droves. In some cases, they're coming here. Uh, it's sometimes good, it's sometimes bad. But you know, this is their vision. They want to control our energy. They want to control our choices. They want to make us pay more. And so for the next year or so, we've got a very important job ahead of us. We have to stay strong. We have to continue to fight against the ever encroachment of government in our lives. We have to uh, make sure that we continue to, to have the ability to make the states and we have our uh, control of our own energy sources, our own energy future, because that is really about our economic future, because energy is in everything. And you know, if you think that we're gonna take a little breather uh, once the president steps on board Marine One and waves goodbye, Hillary Clinton has stated that the Barack Obama agenda on energy is a good start. She wants the total decarbonization of America. That's her goal. So this is, again, this is about a, a contrast in visions. It's about power and control in Washington versus power in, in our hands and empowering us to make good energy choices. And so that's why the road to reform is so important. That's why AFP and the work that you've done in this space, joining hands with AA and other groups is so important because we need leadership in Washington that gives us the vision where human entrepreneurship, technology, and the free market are what, are what dictates our energy choices. So thank you very much. I, will, I look forward to hearing from Ms. Fiorina. <laughs>